All these models that I want to show you right here are 3D printed, and I painted none of them. These are from the most advanced 3D printer that I have ever personally used. We're going to talk about it and why, if you haven't looked at 3D printing for your model railroad, this might be the time. This is the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon Combo. It is an amazing printer. Bamboo Labs sent this to me to try out, and I have to say that I am blown away. Not necessarily because of the print quality, which is really good, but other features, and I will get into those in a bit. First, though, I want to talk about the state of 3D printing for the model railroad world. I'm going to address a few things here. Cost, finding models, and the advancement and ease of use of new 3D printers. The argument that 3D printers are out of the realm of affordability has long been something that holds people back from starting. That is no longer an issue. There are many good 3D printers out there that are under $200 US that can get you started. I know that's still a lot for quite a few people, but when you consider the fact that 3D printers used to cost in the thousands and tens of thousands of dollars, the types of printers we're getting for that under $200 price point is amazing. And this is for both filament and resin printers as well. Now, for those of you that don't know, filament or FDM printers use spools of plastics to create models layer by layer, essentially melting and drawing the layers on the model one by one. Resin printers use a similar process, but it involves curing extremely thin layers of resin with a UV light. That UV light is either pushed through an LCD screen that allows a pattern through, or is using a UV laser to draw the layers. The LCD screen is the more common and less expensive method. Now, it's great to have a printer, but you need something to print. This is where websites like Thingiverse come in. This website has loads of 3D models to download and print, and there are tons for model railroading. These two pieces of rolling stock I found as models on Thingiverse. I was able to print them out, and they run great on my garden railroad. I bet you thought the first rolling stock I printed would have been in scale, wouldn't you? Well, there are also paid websites like Colts where you can purchase models to download, like this road system that can animate cars on your layout. Yes, I'm going to try this one out. I even sell digital models to print on my Etsy store, and of course my patrons at the $5 engineer level get a model every month to download and access to all of my previous models. This does lead to one thing that a lot of people don't consider or know about 3D printers. This is not a true plug-and-play technology like an office printer. These are machines that require maintenance and attention, so you have to be ready for that. It may take some tinkering and adjusting to get your models just right. This brings me to the Bamboo Labs X1. This is the closest I have seen to a plug-and-play 3D printer at the consumer level. This printer has some crazy features, including LiDAR for sensing print bed issues, filament extrusion quality and first layer quality, a camera that can not only live stream your printing to an app on your phone, but it can also detect issues with your print. For example, it saw my printer was making this and stopped my printer and told me about it on my app. And if you have the AMS unit, which is where you can have multiple filaments, you can print up to four different filaments out of it. It even has a system for swapping and purging filaments between the layers. It has most people saying that the printer poops, which is actually fairly accurate. You can even use a hub that allows you to connect up to four different of these AMS units together to get up to 16 different filaments printing on the same print. That is nuts! I was able to print all of these models. These are not painted. This is how they looked once I removed the supports. I printed this version of Building 2. You can see it has the two colors and you can see the brick and everything. This warehouse right here are three different colors. These pieces of G-Scale rolling stock, which I showed you earlier, and the station platform that I did a video on a while back. I was able to print that pre-colored. I even printed a new case for my DCC EX system. By the way, if you guys are interested in me selling any of these pre-colored models or the DCC EX case or anything like that on my Etsy store, I can look into that. Also, I'm going to link these rolling stock files in the description below. The other thing that this printer has is speed. 
It is stupid fast. This is a Benchy, which is a standard test for 3D print quality. It printed this in 17 minutes. Normally this would take over an hour to print. That's how fast this thing is. Now you're probably thinking, Jimmy, this is a great printer that you're showing me, but what is the cost of this printer? Well, I wanna preface it with a few things. First of all, this is a state-of-the-art consumer level printer and it is priced that way. It has a ton of new features that have not been seen at this level before. This entire setup right here, the printer and the AMS multi-material unit is $1,500. Just the printer is $1,200. So you're probably like, ah! But I wanna tell you why I wanted to show you this printer. This is where the technology is going. This is what we're going to be seeing in the future. These technologies are going to proliferate. I already talked about how quickly prices are coming down on 3D printers, and you're going to start seeing more of these technologies implemented in lower price printers. Bamboo Labs has already made a cheaper printer, the P1P, which is about half the cost of the X1, and you can add the AMS unit to it. So it can do a lot of things already that the X1 can do. It can't do everything, but it can do a lot of it. Just a couple years ago, a printer like this would have cost between five and seven, maybe even $10,000. And it's already down to a price of around twelve to $1,500. Yes, that's still expensive, but it's coming down. And what that means is that this kind of technology for plug and play 3D printing, or at least getting pretty close to it, is not only on the horizon, but it's charging towards us. So. If you are thinking about getting into 3D printing for model railroading, this is an exciting time to look at it because 3D printing is entering a new stage. So if you haven't considered it, take another look. It's something that you can add to your repertoire of the hobby and it's going to make your model railroad ultimately better. You may not necessarily look at this one, but take a look at 3D printing for your model railroad. It is a really great thing and I am so happy that I decided to look at it as part of the hobby for me. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.